President Trump taking a strong stand yesterday in Poland, defending Western values. The Wall Street Journal calling it the president's defining speech. Mary Kissel, member of the Wall Street Journal editorial board, Fox News contributor. Mary, great to have you. We've got great a lot to be to, with you. Got a lot to talk about. All right, so this is the picture, though, that everybody has been waiting for: is President Putin and President Trump together. The the speech wasn't nearly as anticipated as the meeting that we just saw happen. Is this a defining trip? Was this a defining speech? Where are we in this? And this is the speech that President Trump should have given for his inauguration. This is a speech that acknowledges and sets the stage for the Putin meeting. It effectively says that, look, this great experiment that we've had, American exceptionalism, and this community of liberal nations that America has protected and nourished and encouraged since the First World War, the Second World War in particular, this is fragile. This is not something which is guaranteed, and it must be defended. And it's threatened. It's threatened not just by threats outside of the United States, threats like terrorism, this terrible ideology, but it's also threatened from within, this kind of crushing regulatory state that he made reference to. And I really think this was a siren call, not just to the citizens of America, but to our friends and allies around the world, that we have resolve and we're going to fight for our values, which Trump says are superior to to those of the Islamic terrorists that are trying to bring us down. And I, I think he's correct with that. The Wall Street Journal, reasonable people could agree, has taken at times a somewhat dim view, shall we say, of President Trump and his rhetoric at times. Is this an inflection point or is this a data point? Well, first, I want to be clear. We, we don't endorse candidates. We don't comment on their personalities. We comment on policy. And so with President Trump, we've had a love-hate relationship with him. We've loved some of his policies, and we've really disliked other parts well, of his policies. Wait, I mean, policies. you're, you're, you're this taking it. This speech was a very, very important speech. This was President Trump going beyond America first. This was President Trump becoming a larger U.S. president, somebody who's standing up and saying, what we have here in America is unique. It is threatened. It must be defended. This is Trump taking a leadership position in the world. I think it's fabulous. I hope that we hear more like this out of him. All right. And the, and the administration is really trying to capture the, sort of the audulation that it's getting. This was a, a, a widely lauded speech by you and by others. Take a listen to Vice President Pence last night. That is unapologetic American leadership. I mean, it really is remarkable to think for the last eight years we, we had an administration that was... Uh, that was more often than not apologizing for America around the world, boasting about leading from behind. And, and today in, in Warsaw, Poland, with those eloquent words that your viewers just heard again, uh, President Donald Trump reaffirmed our nation's commitment to be the leader of the free world. Under President Trump, America is back. So what do you think has changed? Is it that President Trump has changed his policies? Has he changed his views? Has he changed the way he's articulating them? I think what happened is that President Trump said certain things on the campaign trail, and then he got into the Oval Office and he realized the gravity of all of the threats that the United States and our friends and allies face. So you've seen him take several important actions. You saw him actually draw a red line in Syria. We've seen several freedom of navigation exercises in the South China Sea, pushing back on Chinese incursions there. Uh, and I think with this speech, it's just another signal that not just will America defend and speak up for its values, but that we're actually going to take actions to defend them. And that is a very important signal to send, particularly before this meeting with Vladimir Putin. We have heard the president in the past say, this is a lot harder than I thought it would be. <laughs> and in this, in this meeting, and this is a point that Chris Wallace made earlier, in the meeting that's going on right now between the Russians and the United States, there's only six people in the room. There's only four principals, the president, president of Russia, the secretary of state, and the foreign minister. On the Russian side, you have 80 years of combined government experience. On the, Russian, on the Russian side, you have 80 years. On the American side, you have just a year. Is there a learning curve that this speech sort of shows he has gotten over? I hope so. But again, I look at what the president does, not just what he says. And his actions suggest to me that he appreciates the gravity of the threats that we face. Look at North Korea. What did, he, what did we do after North Korea launched its first intercontinental ballistic missile? We held immediately live fire exercises with our South Korean allies. We put the military option on the table. And we started to take sanctions action mm -hmm. against people who support the North Korean regime. That's good action. That's an effort at deterrence. He's going to have to do a lot more than that. 
yeah, with North, North Korea. Korea. That's a separate discussion. But I think that this speech is the framework through which we can start to view all of these different yeah. actions that the Trump administration is taking. Well, it's yeah. very good. And we'll start with what readout we get of uh, this meeting that's going on right now. Mary, appreciate your time. Thanks for having me.